light still on? in the house he's live from brock university we get some other characters in the house too we're going to talk to them this may be a quick hit maybe longer than usual who knows thanks for joining my brother tell me what's going on at brock and thanks for picking up chad's phone i know you're low on bars so what's going on prebs Hey guys, uh, so what's going on, Brock? Uh, the last time I did a count, there's about 150 students here, and the students are outside here because they are being denied an education based on their vaccine status. Uh, majority of the students that um, I've talked to, uh, what I gather is they don't think uh, they should be de- denied an education based on uh, their medical their uh vaccination status in fact they don't think that the university should uh be entitled to any of their medical information and i agree with them who is putting this on and you know brock university's page is not talking about this at all so who's putting it is the student union or is it a faction of the student union or what's going on who's organizing it uh i i believe this is very grassroots and uh there's just some students that are putting it on um i was talking to uh the one student here earlier and uh, they just said that a bunch of students that uh, are, are uh, for Canadian rights and freedoms are just coming together and uh, and uh, bringing this to light. They said uh, the one lady actually she told me that she reached out to uh, several mainstream media outlets to come cover this today, as they felt it was pretty important that uh, students are being denied education and. Uh, They've let me know that no mainstream media outlets have showed up to interview them. So mm. I would like to thank you for covering this at least. Well, thank I would, you, Jim Bennett. You're welcome. I wouldn't have known about it if I hadn't seen your page today. And then you posted. On, I'm sorry. I to, I post, I'm looking at your page now. I thought I was doing a post on my page. I must have been skulking you and mistakenly put it on your page. So there's a post from me on your page. I don't usually do that. Uh, I reposted it to mine after I went. But I saw you on No More Lockdowns page today. And then I went over to your personal page and you got a couple messages calling for people to come over and participate. So I appreciate that, you know, you become a player in this space, whether you want to admit it or not, or whether your rivals want to admit it or not, you've become a voice, an important voice in this space. So I appreciate you picking it up. I wouldn't, I knew about it. Shandor asked me the other day, you're going to go to Brock. I'm like, I don't go to anything. I go to support my peeps, but, uh, I appreciate you picking this up and lending, I think you lend a credible voice and a little bit of weight to this movement by your just showing up and supporting these guys. So thanks to you. How'd you get on it? Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, actually, I, I heard something was going on, but I, I never uh, had anyone talk to me about it. I just seen Shandor's post as well, actually, okay. last night uh, about what time it was. And, okay. and, you know, just really when I sit down and reflect and think that people are being denied an education based on their vaccination status. It just seems so wrong to me. Nothing against the vaccine even. If, if you want to have a vaccine, you get a vaccine. And if you don't want to have a vaccine, you don't get a vaccine. But you should simply not be withheld back from mm-hmm. your career path or your future. You're going down based on that. And uh, it's just a scary path we're headed down. And I'm glad to see a lot of people out here uh, standing out against it. So what's the Sir, I have a question. 
one one second, Jim. Yeah, go ahead. I, I don't have you on camera now, but I was wondering if I would be able to talk to you quickly just on my friend Jim's show because we're trying to get a couple students that just want to talk about what's going on. And would you be willing to to do that? Yeah, sure. Awesome. So yeah, don't worry. Do you, is it okay if I throw him on now, Jim? Absolutely. Yeah, great. We want to talk to anyone that's involved. So this is my friend Jim Fannin, and he runs a radio show. And your name? Uh, Kevin. Kevin. Kevin, just tell us who you are and why you're here. What are you up to? Um, basically, uh, when at the beginning of the school year, Brock requested that we have um, either vaccine papers and we had to uh, present them to them in, in order to attend classes, uh, or we could request medical or religious exemption. Um, I tried to get... Uh, religiously exempt and um, they rejected me twice what? <laughs> uh, the second time I had I think a 25 no sorry a 35 page document um, including the original like form that they made us sign which had to be affirmed by a commissioner of oath which is not an easy process to do in the mm -hmm. limited amount of time that they gave us um and then that got rejected. So here I am. Um, <laughs> and yesterday evening, they completely revoked any authorization that we had with our student emails. So now I can't look at my schedule. I can't apply for new courses. I can't drop old courses. I can't, I can't um, attend any of the in-person classes. Jeez. I can't do basically anything online. Tell us. And I appreciate you're in a kind of a little bit of a spot right now. I don't know if you've been active politically before, but tell us about the impact on you. How are you feeling and what's the impact on your life right now? Um, personally, it, it goes against my religious beliefs for one. Uh, Second of all, it, um, I'm not really that active. This is the first time I've actually been to an event in, I think, a couple years. Uh, so it, I don't feel like I need a vaccine, even without religious reasons. Um, it, it's, it's ridiculous. No, tell, tell me how you're feeling. How's the impact been? Are you stressed out? Are you worried? Are you conflated? Like, I mean, it sounds like you're being backed into a corner. Like, what? how are you feeling personally about it? It's certainly nerve-wracking. Um, I, can't, I can't really do a whole lot right now. I'm kind of waiting for a couple of lawyers to get back to me. But, you know. See, and then I think this is important. I'll cover this. Yeah. People say different. get a life. People are saying get a life. See, people say get a life because they want to have the right. See, back up, middle fingers. See, and that's what happens is uh, people just want to have a free choice and they're not allowed to. Sorry, sir, we're back with you, but I wanted to cover that because I think it's important that people see that we're human beings and we just want to have our own choice and we're not allowed to. People show up and they do things like that, which is very ignorant. And I'm very proud at everybody's response. Just want to say that. Go ahead. Continue though. Nice job, um, Primo. I was saying that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't get out much, which is my personal choice. Um, I work in a, in an environment that's really closed off from any, everyone else. Thankfully they haven't asked for me to get vaccinated. Um, and it, it's, if Brock actually wanted to be inclusive, then they wouldn't have restricted access from online resources. Um, I would still be able to look at my schedule and see when I have classes. Um, it, yeah, I I literally cannot take one of my courses now because they can't, they won't let me. And 
I, I, I don't know what to do, frankly. That's a crazy place to be in, man. Tell me a little bit about what surprises you about all this. How old are you? And tell me how weird it is you finding yourself in this new world order, whatever we're coming into where segregation seems to be the norm and acceptable when we've been told before, don't segregate people. It, it, it marginalizes them. It's not good. Um, I'm 19, so I'm fairly new to pretty much everything. Um, but it's certainly scary. And I never really liked politics that much, specifically for all the lying and the deception. Um, but now it's kind of important to get into. And now I get to see exactly how they're, uh, they're, how deceptive they're being and how I can change it through, through voting and stuff. So, Are your parents on board? Question. Are your parents on board with you? Are they supporting you for, throughout this? Um, yes and no. On on one hand, half of my family is like, yes, um, don't get vaccinated. Well, they support my decision, and they are also not getting vaccinated. The other half have already been vaccinated. Um, they're not pressuring me or anything like that, but. Uh, it's certainly different. Hmm. Yeah, it certainly seems like we're being divided on just about all issues along family lines and, and employment lines and everywhere. I mean, this is division anywhere. Anyways, brother, I'm really proud of what you're doing. Thanks for taking the time. And uh, get a hold of me offline. I, I, I'll support you any way I can. I appreciate your time, brother. I'll let him know uh, what your show is and your handle and that when right. I talk to him. You did awesome, buddy. Good job. Okay. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> That's very cool. Hey, man. Uh, okay. Yeah, I would. Oh, she wants to talk on camera. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll move along down here. <laughs> nice job, Primo. Way to go, man. We need to forward him our own media company. <laughs> yeah, Jim, how's it going? Hey, handsome. Look at you. Look at that beard, yeah, man. Get a haircut, would you? Man, I know where you live. <laughs> Check yourself before you wreck yourself. You know who this is, man. Wreck. Tell you something, man. PPC is where it's at. Recognize that. That's the problem wow. with people today. They need to wake up. This is you too much understand? handsomeness for one shot. We'll come right back to you and you can oh. talk, brother. We're just. Uh, I'll see you at the mansion on the twentieth. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop by have a drink with you. The twentieth. Oh, we, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I haven't got the green light on that, but uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, the man, like the mansion's on board. I'm just not sure about the. I mean, maybe I'll be partying by myself at the mansion. I was in the 20th. I don't know. They're going to open up the bar for us, so that's very cool. Thank you, AJ and uh, Stewie. Yeah. I appreciate that. Okay, we're good. we're just moving along the line, students, and we'll come right back. Andrea, hi. I'm Rob. It's a pleasure to meet you. So I'm with my uh, my friend here, Jim Sannon, and uh, Jim Sannon has uh, do, been doing his part on the internet, um, bringing these things to light and talking <laughs> about them as much as they can. As we know, uh, mainstream media won't do that. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll get him to ask you some questions. I just want to make sure. Can you hear, Jim? I yeah, no, I can hear great. Audience. Thank you. Okay, sorry, your name again one more time? It's Andrea. This is Andrea, Jim. Hi, Andrea, you're gorgeous. What are you doing down there wasting your time with these losers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to watch it with this Okay, we're going to... Everyone's on the Jim Fannin show. <laughs> Jim Fannin, you have some uh, fans in the house. Oh, good. I love the kids. Right, I was I just posted that thing today. It's the only election I've ever won was student vote at uh, Lord Secord as a Green candidate. So, Andrea, yeah, tell us about how you got hooked into this and the impact on you. How are you feeling? Oh, uh, I'm so mad, honestly. <laughs> this past week has been probably one of the worst weeks of my life, um, just dealing with the stress of everything that they're putting us under. Uh, so I'm basically I'm a third year student in the Con Ed program. Wow. Um, all of my classes, I have six classes this semester. I was okay. supposed to have a placement. I was supposed to have placement last year. My placement got denied and changed into an online or an in-person class. Um, so I had six classes. Sure. I had six classes. Uh, five of them have been, de I've been denied basically okay. because they're in person and then they are not offering them online, like as an online format. They're only offering 40% of our classes online. And because I'm unvaccinated, 
they have basically told me that I've been in contact with the president, the dean of my program, um, the chair of student affairs, I believe. Literally, I've sent out probably like 30 different emails to people saying that I don't, I don't, <laughs> you don't need to tell me that, uh, that I need to be vaccinated to go to school. So I've been restricted access, online access. So Sakai and my Brock U as of Friday, they've restricted my access online to the five of my classes. I have one currently online. And it's only because I switched myself. It's an elective. So I'm not allowed to attend any of my mandatory classes, which means I can't finish my degree. Um, it's putting me a year behind, if not more, if nothing changes. Uh, they basically told me when I said, like, what am I supposed to do? You're not offering my courses. They say, oh, you just defer or just do electives this year and then try to catch up on your mandatory next year, which, again, makes no sense because you're putting me a year behind and costing me thousands of dollars. Um, yeah, so that's, that's basically it, that I'm kind of at a standstill at the moment. All because right. they shut me out of Sakai. Um, so I can't even drop the classes that they're telling me I can't attend. I have to call registration and get them to kick to, to deregister me, basically. So I don't have access to those classes as of Friday. And then on the 21st, they are physically removing me from all of my in-person classes. So I will not be registered for them. Which, I mean, okay, fine. I can switch to online. But the thing that makes me the most mad is they're deregistering me on the 21st. The 20th is the day that we have to pull out to get full reimbursement. So wow. they're basically doing it the next day. They're right. charging me a full year's tuition to kick me out the next day. Wow. I want to try to give you a little bit of hope. I know you're young and feeling kind of hopeless by circumstance. And a friend of mine said to me the other day, and I was glad whoever said it, I can't remember. They said... Don't worry about the passports. You know why the passports aren't going to be a problem? This is just a little bump in the road because coronavirus is going to go away like everything else has gone away. We're going to look back at 2020 and 2021 and go, what the hell did we do to our children? So I'm not sure that that's very, uh, um, that, that's very <laughs> prophetic prophetic or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm not good at telling the future, but you got to live in a place of hope. And I don't know if that helps you, but I, I'm hoping this is just a bump in the road. Where are you getting your support from? Who's with you? What are your parents like on this? So my parents are amazing. Honestly, luckily, I am so blessed to have a community within my church, within uh, my own home, within my siblings. And um, not so much friends, but definitely people close to me. Uh, they're for me. They're with me. They're trying to stand. None of them were able to come today, but they were willing to come, which is amazing. Um, but... And then also within students too, I was, I didn't have any friends at Brock for the first year. And then second year was online because so you just, you don't talk to anyone. So coming into this, honestly, we have a Facebook group, we have a telegram group, and there's been so much support within, within those areas that we're able to strengthen each other and kind of give advice and be like, Hey, we're here for each other. We don't know each other like personally, but we're here for you. So it's mainly been through there. And then like I said, my family and my church, they, they've been, um, a rock, honestly. <laughs> well, God bless you. I love you. We're with you. Let me know offline how I can support you and your cause. If you need anything, reach out. And I really appreciate your time today. Thanks, Andrea. Thank you so much. I'll pass you back. Yeah, you're welcome. Oh, my God. Thanks, thank That's you. heartbreaking. Jim, hey, Jim. Chad, what up? Not much. Uh, I got to take my phone back from Rod. Did you get a bunch of interviews? <laughs> I did get a bunch, man. It's very cool. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, <laughs> you got your good, own good. TikTok channel to manage, man. I can't be ripping you off all day. <laughs> but, uh, I'm glad I can help you out and everything. It's good. It's good. We did good today. Uh, what candidates are there? Mike's here from Wild well, Niagara Center and Peter's here from Niagara Falls. All right. Maybe I'll touch Peter up. I got another window all open, uh, and I'll shoot it off to him, see if he can speak to it. But I appreciate you lending us your phone. Tell Rick and Dan and Primo and all the guys. I love you guys. You're doing the good work, man. Hello, handsome. Yeah, man. Holla at your boy, man. Answer your phone. Okay? Stop screening, man. Answer your phone. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you later. All right, baby. We love you. Peace out. <laughs> But, you know, that's that's not cool. That's not cool, Rick. Rick, don't call me out on my own show. Rick, Rick, I thought we were friends. Rick, Rick, stop it. Okay. So we've had some meshes. <laughs> so we've had some crossed wires. I'm not always... Well, I didn't actually blow an appointment with you, Rick. 
Oops. <laughs> Excuse me. I've got gas today. Um, that was a little bit of an impromptu thing. Go uh, touch up Rob Primo on Facebook. And you can get Chad also on uh, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Uh, he's everywhere. Chad's right here. He's on Twitter as well. Kids rolling. He's not a candidate, but he's a huge supporter and he's active. I got an interview with Chad that you can watch if you're on YouTube or wherever you're watching. You can just scroll down. Mimi, thanks for chumping in. Chumping in? Deej, what up? What are you so sorry about? What memes? What's going on, memes? Oh, memes. Deej. Yeah, what up? Okay, so yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, Peter Terrace is at the event. I might be able to pick him up later. <laughs> I didn't know he was at the event, but I called him, and he answered his phone. I said, listen, get arrested, get in trouble, make the media. <laughs> get in the news. I want to pick you up again. I can't. I'm not just picking you up because you're a candidate. Do something. Do anything. Get in trouble. Get fired. Get canceled. <laughs> Become. If they call you a white supremacist in the media... <laughs> <laughs> you know you're doing the right thing, okay? They're calling Larry Elder. He's black and he's fantastic, but because he's a conservative, they're calling him the blackface of white supremacy. He's trying to oust. This is the last day of voting in California to recall Gavin Newsom, and I don't know how it works. What it is there a vote? Is, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Do they decide on the same ballot whether Newsom is out and Elder's in? Because that could be cool. <laughs> anyway. Uh, get in trouble. Get fired. <laughs> what, is, what does Gavin McKenna say at the end of the show? Get fired. Get in trouble. Oh, man. I should know this better than I do. Anyways, go touch up my boys. This is uh, Chad, and then you can catch Primo as well. Primo's over here. All right, well, I don't want to waste any more of your time. Thanks for uh, checking it out. And maybe we'll have more from Brock later. Uh, like I said, Peter Taurus is down there. We'll see if I can get him to talk to me. Peace, love, hug your neighbor, and for whatever you do, rip that filthy, dirty mask off your face. Live your life. Defy. Do not comply. I'm out.